Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to day five of the International Women's Day Heritage Bank's five-day virtual seminar. My name is Amanchi Ihagwam, your moderator for this session and our final session. I want to thank everyone so much for joining us so far. We've had five amazing days. And today is the fifth day. On day one, we talked about finances. On day two, we talked about striking the balance and the different roles you play as a woman. And um, on day three, we talked about our health, especially our reproductive health as women. Yesterday, we talked about sugar, spice, and all things nice. And basically how as women, our speaker related our processes to the battering of cake and how we can come out of all those things looking beautiful, nice and fantastic. So today we are going to be having another amazing session with a wonderful speaker who will be talking to us about no limitations. As women, you know, our team for this year, um, this year's International Women's Day celebration is Choose to Challenge. So for me, I've decided to choose to challenge every limitation that has been put on me because I'm a woman and I advise every single woman out there to do the same. There's no limit to what you can do in your life. You are responsible for the outcomes in your life. And the person who will be taking this conversation further with us today is Miss Musumola Umaru. So I'll just be doing a brief introduction of Miss Musumola, then I'll hand over to her. Please, as she's talking, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please feel free to put it in our question and answer segment and she'll take it after her session. Thank you all. So Miss Mosumala Umaru is an agribusiness entrepreneur who started her journey straight out of college in 2004 with Honeysuckle's PTL Ventures, marketing freshly processed chickens, snails and catfish to quick service restaurants in Nigeria, proudly calling herself a farmer. Mosu is currently the founder and chief realization officer of Harvesters Farm Limited, and a part of our role is to oversee the design, development, and operations of about 7,000 hectare agribusiness operations across southwestern part of Nigeria. This company is engaged principally in farming, food production, processing, and distribution of a wide range of produce, which include chicken, eggs, snail, catfish, fruits and vegetables, as well as cash crops, such as cassava, albeit on contract basis. In 2009, Mosumala set up Abira Agricultural and, sorry, Abira Agricultural and Educational Support Initiative to help bridge the gap identified in the Nigerian agribusiness space and to pursue significant youth involvement in the sector, realizing that sustainable economic growth rests on viable MSME development. That's a micro, small, medium enterprise development. Ms. Musumala Umaru obtained her foundational degree in zoology from Lagos State University, Lasso. She has a certificate in enterprise management from the Pan-Atlantic University Enterprise Development Center, 2009. She's a Goldman Sachs 10,000 Women Scholar. She's an Ashoka Fellow and Pretty Miss Farmer, as she's fondly called, has served as an ambassador, advocate, and consultant to the African Union Commission Youth Division in 2011. So please welcome with me. If your hands are not too busy, you can give a virtual round of applause. Please welcome with me, Miss Musumala. I'll be handing over to her. Ms. Musuna, good morning. You are very welcome. Good morning, Amarache. It's a delight to join you this morning. Good morning, Ma. You are welcome. So you Thank have the you. Floor. Thank you so much, Amara. Thank you for um, that wonderful introduction. I mean, I was blushing when you were reading my profile. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to again congratulate the management and team of Heritage Bank for putting together a five day virtual session to encourage the female um, 
members of staff and also encourage and admonish and you know just help women refocus generally your the bank's um clients and friends it is a delight to be here and joining you this morning i have had the privilege of listening to some of the previous speakers and i dare say that it was very insightful listening to the the, the recommendations around managing our time, the recommendations around how, how we juggle the business of our individual lives and how we strike the balance as women. You know, um, when I got the invitation to talk about no, no limitations, I chuckled. I chuckled because I can almost just say that the only thing that has kept me alive today is the fact that I have lived by that rule and that phrase. The, bo the, the, the larger part of my life has been governed by that phrase, there'll be no limitations, you know? So if there's anything we will achieve as we wrap up today's session, it's the fact that there should, we should all as individuals choose to challenge every limitation that has held us bound as women as entrepreneurs, as employees of the organizations we individually work with, and in all of the, the endeavors we've tried to set out. To you know, my journey is very interesting, and I, <clears throat> pardon me, but I mean, maybe I, I, would, I would liken it to, I'd like to share a bit of my story and my journey around my faith. Um, Everyone was, must have something that you believe in. Um, I always tell people that I may be unsure of what I completely want at every point in time, but I am very certain about the things that I do not want. And one of the things that I do not want is to fail. And so for many of us, the fear of failure propels us and pushes us to challenge every boundary and every restriction that we have hitherto been boxing by life. Life throws a lot at us. Mine is a very interesting one because by age 10, I was, um, I woke up to the realization that my parents' marriage was not working out. I mean, they had a lavish 10th birthday party for me, but by my 11th birthday, my parents were no longer together. And that, you know, put a new journey ahead of me. I went to boarding house. Um, it was a single sex school. And how did I find out that my parents were no longer together? Um, I had asked that certain things be brought for me from home and absolutely everything that was brought was wrong, you know? And then how does a, an 11 years old begin to process the journey of life, the journey through life with one parent raising you I was a confused child at some point. I mean, everything life presented at that point was to distort who I was going to be, how I was going to turn out. But you know, um, up there in the universe, someone governs this entire system. And once you have a desire in your heart, which is what I would leave, one of the things I would leave with you today is the limitations that life tends to put at us is almost a hoax. It is the only thing that would stand between you and overcoming those boundaries because I don't see, I don't even recognize that there's any such words as limitations. It might be hard to process. Um, it's even much harder to live a life where you, your expectations are not met, where you think that you want to achieve greatness and you, and and you have what it takes, but for some stroke of interjection by life, you lose out on those opportunities. But every single day, what is important is finding the energy and the courage to push yourself to do all that you set out to do. So even as an 11 years old, I made up my mind that mommy and daddy's marriage field does not make most more life failure that mommy and daddy could not make the right choices should not impact on my journey. And I vowed within myself as that young, at that young age that I was going to shatter everything 
that was designed by coincidence to pull me down. And then the journey began. Like the farmer, I began to sow seeds into my future. I began to take action. I began to do things that would excite me to the point that I would always chart the right course for the desires I had in my heart. And somewhere along the line, a child who was meant to be a medical doctor, which was daddy's desire, not mine, <laughs> it was put in my head. You know, I was, in, I was imprinted upon that I had to be a doctor to succeed. But, but I found out that I wanted more, right? I wanted to, I wanted to have a lot of money. I wanted to be extremely happy. I wanted to care for people. I wanted to be generous. I wanted to be a giver. And I didn't think that the box of medicine could, uh, and it could accommodate all of those desires. So I decided to be a better person in another sphere, in another field. And somehow, like Mrs. Um, Mary mentioned a, a few days ago, the universe began to crystallize events and occurrences in my favor and everything began to fall in place. Did I have difficulties? Yes. Um, when I started my agribusiness enterprise, it was born out of, so it, it was an exciting, interesting surgeon. I had the privilege of um, going to Kano to study medicine at the Bayro University. I gained admission into Kano, Bayro University Kano. And um, the riot broke out and I decided to come back home, but I didn't come back home empty and dead. So a young girl at 70, at um, 18 at the time, 17, 18, was very excited. I had seen an opportunity with a new product. So I found myself all through that period taking a fresh drink called Zobo. And I came back with a bag of Zobo to Lagos, you know. And that bag birthed an enterprise for me because through that first bag of sorrel leaves that I brought to Lagos, I started bottling Zobo for people to drink. I was the first person to put Zobo in a tamper-proof bottle in Lagos. I was the first woman to put Zobo in a sachet like pure water in Lagos. I was an undergraduate at the time. I was in my first year in university. And then I told my father I wasn't going back to Kano because of the riot and I wanted to change my career path. I was no longer going to be his medical doctor, so he could beat the desire of being called the father of a doctor goodbye. He almost disowned me, but fast forward, I got admission into Lasso to study zoology and that birthed a new course. And I realized that, yes, I could care for people without being a doctor. I could be very successful and wealthy without being a doctor. Again, I took up the limitations of a particular career path and charted mine, and then the desire to become an agro owner, and that saw me through trying my hands on big cake making, um, um, food catering, and all of that. By the time I graduated, there was more clarity. There was clarity because I found opportunities again in the food space, and I narrowed it down specifically because I prayed and I asked, what can I do differently? Now that I have studied zoology, I have a certificate, what will I do with this? And I heard clearly, once, never again, food. It jumped at me and it, it stayed with me forever. So food, so I started emphasize my activities, increase my activities around cake making and food distribution and decorating and my drinks expansion. I mean, I was shipping Zobo to Port Harcourt to Eket by air. It was exciting. But by my 27th birthday, I had a very new turn. I lost everything that I had worked for. I went bankrupt. I overtraded. I took poor financial decisions that ruined everything that I had invested, built, and I was already building. That could have stopped, that could have stopped me because at that time I was 27. Interest on some of the loans I had taken 
taking was accruing a double D. Um, at a point, at last count, by my 27th birthday, I was exposed to about 27 million naira. And this time around, my father said I was just going to, he had had enough. First, you stopped working with the family business, and then you started your own business. And here we are, we're now being looked for by financial institutions because you're owing money, because you're indebted. But I didn't let it pull me down. What I did with that was believe in myself and tell myself that I, I had to find my true heart, that I can do this, that I could, I could challenge the status quo, that I could break that limitation, that I could stop everything that was at that point designed to, to put an end to the vision, to put an end to my own dream. Because I thought my dreams were indeed valid for me. I thought that all my dream school, I, I, had, I had lived for 27 years without fear. I had found my voice. I, I, I believe that nothing was impossible. I created my own standards. Greatness was all I wanted, you know. I, I just, I, I desired, I made the sacrifices even when others didn't believe in me. I held on. It was hard. I mean, each passing day became harder. And then, um, you know, it was not to any fault of mine. So this is running an agribusiness in a country where you all know that power failure and power cut out, cut was is a norm, you know. It, it, it happens all the time. So, yes, I did make some poor judgments, some poor decisions, but at some point, some, some of the failures were due to lack of receivables from the people I had sold products to, the QSRs at that time, you know, but I had to push myself. I knew I could do it. I decided that I had to get up. I remember that, you know, at some point I couldn't even go near the airport. I was so afraid, but I kept on. I kept on, I kept on, I kept at it every day. I kept saying that you will find new new ways of exit. You will, you will find a way out. So I kept recreating products. So I went from snails, um, did a vertical integration with snail production. I started with chickens. We expanded. I, it was, it was an interesting journey, but some along the line you know that pain point you know when life throws curveballs at you what you do with them is what really matters you know somehow somehow as, as i began to cleanse myself of those the pain that i felt from the failures of my decisions and my judgments i began to attract I became attractive to helpers who saw the sincerity of purpose, who saw that I was committed to what I wanted to do, who saw that, you know, many people start businesses and today you're in fashion, tomorrow you're in food, next day, next year they see you in entertainment. But I found the courage to stay on in that difficult path. When I came into agriculture, it was not glamorous to say, oh, I'm a farmer. It was not glamorous. It was unpopular. The people who were farming as women were at extremely smallholder players. No, it wasn't a celebrated profession as it is now. Um, but, but if anything helped me along the way, I never I never let my ego get in the way. So I would, I was not, not too ashamed to ask. I was, I mean, from the right people, there were times when I was afraid, but I never really let my ego deter me too deeply. So I could get help from younger persons. I could get help from older people. I even began to call myself a transgenerational bridge. And somehow the galaxy began, the universe began to crystallize favor in my, help in my favor. One day I walked into business school and, and 
the first person who showed me favor was the pro chancellor, Dr. Christopher Kolabi. He listened to me because I shared my story of pain and woes of failure at the time. And I thought that I had tried everything by the books and I wasn't even sure what turn to take any longer. And we agreed that we, th we were going to start a new journey. And with the help of Dr. Christopher Kolade and my dear friend Mope Abudu, I set out to raise a hundred thousand naira to start all over again. And I mean all over. On a clean slate, don't forget I still had the debt of over 27 million naira hanging on my head, over my head. But I wasn't ashamed to start over. And when I decided to take that turn to start over, it was the best decision of my life. Because fast forward from that day to date, it's 15 years. And it's additional 15 years of joy, pain, successes. And one of them was that a new door opened. So beyond being a farmer, I found a new opportunity in consulting as an agro-entrepreneur. So I started helping others with the knowledge I gathered from my own failure to help others avoid those pitfalls in setting up their own enterprises. And somehow in helping others, I got paid along the line and I began to offset my own exposure, you know? So when I hear that phrase, your gift will make a way for you, let nothing stop you. The only thing that can deter you from succeeding is if you stop believing in yourself. And so somehow I started a new journey. And then I, I ran that for about four or five years. I got invited to work for the AU, African Union Commission Youth Division as a youth advisor and cons um, consultant. I got exposure to the World Bank by Mrs. Obieza Kwesili, who thought that I had a, 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 a phenomenal story to share to the world. I got new platforms. I got international platforms to speak. I, I went back to business school thanks to Goldman Sachs. I found new opportunities, new vistas of opportunities open for me. I even recently found myself serving Nigeria as the first youth Youth technical advice, first tech, senior technical advisor on youth and gender in the office of the Honorable Minister of Agriculture. This is failure, whose parents separated at 11, whose life had thrown balls at, curve balls at in a manner that I was meant to not succeed, who along the way made poor choices, who, oh, by the way, I am not married, I am happily unmarried, you know, whose friends of guys who had showed interest in me told them oh you cannot marry her because she's from a broken home girls who come from broken homes or whose mothers are yoruba and have I come from dysfunctional or broken homes tend never to stay in marriages and i had all such said to me but not at one point did i allow those things influence or change my DNA of focus on the fact that I could succeed. I kept at it. I worked hard, diligently on a daily basis to run my enterprises. Look, if you think that the challenges are over, let me give you a new curveball life has just thrown at me. So we recently started our expansion project in your state and we acquired 750 hectares for an integrated farm operation. And guess what? That operation is in Igogo, the hotbed of the cattle headers crisis and uh, um, the civil unrest in Oyo State. So if I thought I had had it all growing up as a young woman, even now I'm still faced with those challenges. So my question to you is, what is it that life is throwing at you that is making you think that it's over? On the 29th of January, 2021, I lost one of the most important persons in my life. And for two weeks, I thought my life had ended. I thought 
there was no reason to leave again. But you know, on the 16th of Febru February, we laid this gem to rest. And as soon as he put, committed her to Mother Earth, it became clear that I had to move on. I had to continue living. There was, there's no limitation. The only day a limitation comes is the day death comes calling. I have no control over two days in my life. The day, I, three things in my life. The day I was born, the ones who gave birth to me, and the day I was. So if I have no control over this thing, what do you think a girl has to do? A girl has got to do what a girl has got to do, which is live a limitless life. Live a life free and devoid of all stereotypes, all boundaries. Shatter them when you make conscious, you know, we need to consciously understand the times and seasons that we're living in. You know, I, I, I go to the point in my life where I know that everything that I do, I am a product of influence. So I am very deliberate about my association. I am very deliberate about my exposure. I am very deliberate about my interactions and interface with people. I'm very deliberate about learning. I'm very deliberate about engagement. I am very deliberate about spiritual things. Because you see, we're all spiritual beings. Um, the ones who are afraid of dying are the ones who are usually very stingy. If you're a giver, you will not be afraid of death. And you wonder why I will speak about death. Because you know what? Even God has told us that we will face difficult times. But he will not leave us without help. We're not going to go through this by ourselves. It is when we think that it is by our human abilities alone that we then begin to make mistakes. But when we're able to understand that if we program ourselves, if we plan adequately, if we show our hearts, you know, they say women are emotional. I say, look, we, yes, we may seem emotional, but being emotional, women is a strength it's a strength do not let it be a weakness because you need that connectedness with your individuality and personal I, and self to be a daughter to be an effective mother to be an effective employee to juggle all of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis so we cannot afford to kill that strength if we're not emotional now, then how do we find empathy? How do we listen to people? How do we care for people? So yes, they can say to you, be emotional, that you're emotional. It's all right. Don't take it as a derogatory statement. Leverage it as a transformational tool to impact the people around you positively. Let us stop seeing ourselves as finite people because we're infinite. We, we, there's nothing... An African woman, there's nothing a woman generally cannot achieve once she sets her mind to it. You see, when natural, that thing called womb that we carry is, is a warehouse to not. And because we're natural nurturers, it becomes easy for us to birth new ideas. It becomes easy for us to give love. If it comes easy for us to care for people, it becomes easy for us to be versatile. It becomes easy for us to be flexible. It becomes easy for us to be accommodating. It becomes easy for us to enhance life with our beauty. So let us from the, the womb, inside out, radiate the kindness that our gender is actually gifted with. And let us not beat ourselves to about the things we do not have, about the things that we think that limit us. What are those things? It is fear, anxiety, you know, that tends to limit us. Can we find knowledge and become fearless? Can we push ourselves towards previous limitations that has held us bound and live responsibly? Find people that will be 
accountable to and just commit to ourselves to, sh to working smart, like Mrs. Mary said. Hard work is good, but smart work is even better. There's nothing more satisfying than living life on your own terms and making it on your own terms and knowing that you put all of your best into this and that when you come out and when people ask you to give account of your actions like I am doing today, you can actually say that I made it. And that spurs you to take even bigger and more epic actions by the day. If I leave you with nothing today, let it be the fact that you can push yourself to become fearless. Let it be that I leave you with the desire to begin to set new goals. I mean, set the craziest goals ever. I said I was going to be the firmest woman in Nigeria to promote agriculture as being a glamorous career and a profession. I succeeded. I set very audacious goals that, you know, at a point I was looking for financing for my business and every financial institution I went to would not touch me. I was too small and my business was early stage. I had all sorts of doors were shut in my face. But you know what I did? I let every door shut in my face, push and propel me to say, I believe enough in myself to do more. So I started looking for, what were those things that they were looking for before they would touch me? So I started owning my skills in those areas. And before I knew it, some of them would say, we will only talk to businesses that are operating on a thousand hectares. And so I went out to look for my first 25 hectares. I bought 25 hectares on credit and I started paying over time. And then I moved from 25 hectares to acquiring 3,000 hectares, to then acquiring 7,000 acres, to then beginning to say, let's look for investors outside Nigeria. Let's begin to have those conversations that would set us on a pedestal that make us a household name. And then growing a retail chain that is, that is a retail spe specialty grocery store, farm shop and building my own little empire and creating jobs for people and then creating hope because right now we're in an era where even government world over have failed and people we are now looking to each other to create hope provide leadership and help us all become more and become better when respect is not given to us we need to earn it as women I don't believe that I need an alarm clock to wake up every morning. You know why? Because my goals wake me up on a daily basis. My greatest dreams in life is to be that change agent that impacts lives, that impacts lives, but impacts lives through food. So, so daddy wanted me to impact life through medicine as a doctor, but I found another hospital to run my clinics which is the food clinic where you know that there's only one thing man cannot do without. We can all choose not to wear new clothes, but I don't know one person who, who will choose not to eat. As, as I close, I say to you, you wonder why agribusiness, why food? I'll give you some statistics. The population of Nigeria today stands at over 200 million. If the average Nigerian spends 100 Naira per day on food, food only, I have not said every other aspect of the agribusiness value chain, which is uh, um, primary production, which across different product chains or, or processing or logistics or transportation or, or, or packaging. I am just saying food spent per capita. If it is pegged at a hundred Naira daily, it means that it is a 20 billion Naira spent on food per day in Nigeria that those getting a percentage, a significant portion of that daily food spend in Nigeria is one of my goals. And that is what keeps me awake on a daily basis. My desires wake me up. My desires propel me to, to do more. I didn't, you know, I don't need haters to fuel my fire. My purpose in life, which I found early, fuels my fire. 
And you know, I make sacrifices on a daily basis to achieve those desires. And I know that, yes, I'm making sacrifices today, but I will enjoy later. I push myself so hard now, but I will relax later. I unleash the beast in me on a daily basis because I want to bring out the best in me. And I just want to charge you that you can do it. Forget about other people's opinion. I have my own opinion. I have my own heart. I have my own dreams. Cowards are the only ones who never get started. And I know that everyone listening to me today is not a coward. The weak never finished. But guess what? The strong ones never quit. You can all make it happen. Thank you so much for listening to me today. And I look forward to taking your questions. It's been amazing staying in your midst and sharing my journey with you. Thank you once again, Heritage Bank, for giving me your platform to speak to your audience. Wow. My God. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much. Like I'm still reeling from all the salient points you made, ma. So many things, so many things are just hitting me left and right. You were just so spot on, honestly, in the most recent way. And your story is, <laughs> I don't know, your story is so deep and so hot. I don't know. It just speaks to my very soul and I'm sure it speaks to everybody else. That what is that thing in front of you that you're saying is holding you back? After this session, I have no excuse. I have no excuse. I am going to indeed set audacious goals. The things that I'm thinking crazy in my head, I believe I can achieve them now. Just listening to you, like, I feel like, what is that thing I want to do that I just feel like, oh, I'm a Nigerian and I can't do them. I feel like I've been given a burst of energy to start to pursue them and i hope that god will help me you know to never give up thank you so much for sharing from your heart from your soul really and giving us those salient points and for me i just feel like we have so much we we let you left us with more than you said you left us with i need to just push myself and for everyone listening to us i hope you got as much as i did from this session it's been amazing amazing we can just sit here and keep listening to you <laughs> but we have to take questions now so i'll just go into the question and answer um, segment and see what we have so someone says i am encouraged by your journey yes so am i <laughs> wow could you share in greater details your agribusiness scope and how new entrants can get into that space so Matt, what do you um, want to say to this person? I know you mentioned some things about what you do in your own agribusiness. Yeah. Maybe you just want to shed more light on this area. Thank you. So, so I always say to people that they say, um, you know that saying about working from a position of strength and a position of knowledge, um, work from the known, work from the known. The agribusiness on, um, platform globally, especially in Nigeria, has there tons of opportunities. However, it's important that you identify where your strength is and where you can play. I am always very careful to tell people where to start from. And, and the reason is simple. You all, you all know, I, I don't know what you have. So I cannot, I cannot say to you specifically, this is where to start, but I, I'll give you a few insights. When the lockdown occurred last year, one of the things that we had was that people needed food at their doorstep. So that birthed the emergence of a lot of logistics businesses because people couldn't go out. But the only people who were allowed to move were uh, um, people who were providing, who were frontline workers, so food vendors, hospital workers, people in the medical field, and and so on. So for you, I, I, I wish I knew, I knew where you are, but generally, I always say to people, look within your neighborhood and do a survey. Um, don't 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 necessarily look at primary production. There 
there are things that you have observed within the agricultural space that probably is a problem, a challenge that you a, 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 a challenge that you face. So, for instance, my retail outlet was burned out of the fact that I love excellent customer service, and I love a beautiful ambience of a place to shop. So, I have ideas of how I want, and I love to cook, and I want varying products. So, and I want a clean environment. Our market spaces, our open stall markets, are not very exciting places to visit. So I decided that I was going to give birth to a business that was going to provide that beauty. Because I also started asking, many more people were like me. So can I cater to those people who, like me, are interested in an, a, a lovely ambience, a shopping experience? So what I am selling it's not just retailing food, it's that I am also selling an experience. So for someone to get up and say, I want to buy products from farm shop, they're buying three, a few things. They're buying trust, they're buying quality, they're buying value, freshness with value. You know, so after a while, some of them don't even need to come to our physical location because they trust us enough to deliver to them in their absence that wow experience at all times. That's one. Now, over the agri space today, there are tons of opportunities, and I'll break it down. Agriculture is divided into two streams. We have upstream agriculture, which is involved in production, um, industrial production, where you look at things like um, uh, um, cocoa processing. I mean, you have to start from primary production. So, large plantations for cocoa, for rubber, for oil palm, for cassava, um, commercial productions of vegetables using greenhouses, um, livestock production. Um, and then you begin to come all the way to processing and packaging, um, where you begin to make, um, use Tetra Pak and put food products in pouches, like what we're now doing with a lot of our indigenous food items. You want to begin to think around solutions, providing solutions, basically. So if you are providing solutions, then I think that that's the best entrance into the agribusiness space. So focus on things that solve problems. So I never venture into a business without having problem solving in mind. So that's what I encourage you to do to the person who asked that question then coming downstream you then need to begin to think about um sales retail distribution um um things around um, um coffee shops smoothie parlors and lounges and bars um healthy snack lounges you know making snacks from um items like coconut cashew dehydrated fruits you know, all of those healthy options. So those are things that are play uh, products that you find around the downstream sector of, of the agri space. But upstream, we have industrialization, fertilizer manufacturing, and um, you have conversion of um, products like cassava to ethanol. And you and you know, agriculture is so broad. It is so broad. Agribusiness is broad. I mean, some people can just specialize in financial services for agribusiness. You can specialize in insurance for agribusiness. You can specialize in capacity building and skills development for agribusiness. There's so, the opportunities are enormous. People just need to begin to think out of the box. So I would say, start from your place of strength, start from where you are, use your knowledge and bring into the sector because now we need to formalize the sector and we need more who, are, who, who have um, skill sets uh, worked or disciplines like accounting, finance, literacy, um, um, people who understand corporate governance, people who understand structure, build, building processes, legal frameworks. We need all of those skill sets right now to formalize the agri business landscape in Nigeria. Because over the years, that sector has been fought with people run by people who are unskilled, um, smallholder farmers who live in rural communities, do not have the exposure and the knowledge to drive growth within that sector. So yes, that's where I, I think that you should come from. 
Thank you so much, ma'am, for that comment. Can you hear me? Thank you so much. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that amazing response. Very comprehensive. And I'm sure that whoever asked that question has a very um, complete answer to our question. So I'll just take more questions. Um, someone is asking, how do you advise someone still struggling to find her calling, but knows for sure that she wants to do something else? She wants to do more. What will you advise her to do? Is what this person is asking. So what I usually say to people, when you're at that, because we all go through that block phase. Um, I told you that I lost someone in January and yeah. it felt like everything should just, what was it all about? Why the struggle? You know, why do we even fight for it? What do we fight for? But you see, if you're still trying to find your calling, I always say that the best place to find your calling is in giving of yourself to others. So volunteering is a good window to help you discover you. Find charities, find NGOs, faith-based organizations, find courses that you can give of your time to. You see, the best of you is found in the time of difficulty. You, every time I have gone through a painful process or a painful path, I always come out better. It's like God deliberately allows me go through that difficult phase to reshape my direction or refocus my thinking or refocus my outlook and to life, which then impacts my outcomes. Um, so what I would advise you is, so I'm a woman of faith, so I pray. I believe in prayers, right? So I pray. So whilst I say you pray on one hand and see God's face, I would also say that do the work because here's my hand. I have nothing. When you open your hands to God and you say, bless me, what is he going to bless? When God blesses nothing, it means that he he will multiply nothing and multiplying nothing in your life is not what you desire so you must have something in your hand for god to bless so when you pray put in the work and one of the best ways is to volunteer so give of your time sacrifice that which you may not have money you may not have clarity but you have time time is one of the biggest resources we all have give of your time to others who could use it it's not so much about money. At that point, go to a charity, go to a motherless baby's home, help them care for the children, look for a new cause in town and volunteer. They're planting trees, go there and plant trees. Then find yourself. You will find yourself in giving. Oftentimes we, you know, everyone says that, that person is a leader, that person is a leader. Leadership starts from within. So you must birth the leader within first before you can make demand from and of the leaders outside. So finding purpose is so is as easy as giving of, of your time. Now, when you do that and then you commit to prayer, trust me, God is a just God. He will not leave you without help. And he did not say we will not go through difficulties. He just said that we will not go through it alone. And that even when we go through it, he will provide help for us. And that's what we need to focus on because I know that that's the important thing. Every one of us just wants to be better at what we do. So yes, just do it like Nike. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much. You made a very salient point, you know, in your answer to this question, how leadership starts from within and there's always something to give of yourself. There's always something, we always have something. And it may not be money, it may not be, you know, resources at that point, but you have time, everyone has time, you know, so that's, that's for me, that, that hits me, that resonates so well with me. Thank you for that response. Okay, so we'll take more questions. Someone is asking, from your wealth of experience, would you advise a trading business, buying and selling, or a business that involves production or manufacturing? I feel empowered from your talk. So what I think this person is asking is, if you would advise him or her to go into a trading business which involves buying and selling or a business that involves production and ma manufacturing. 
So either way, either way, you you will succeed. I, I, I like to go back to play to your strength. Are you good at selling? Are you good at trading? Do you have the knowledge and skill set to compete in the times that we're living in? Because today, buying and selling and trading has gone beyond I set up a shop or I buy products and I put in the trunk of my car. People are leveraging digital media for marketing, leveraging all sorts of tools. Are you going to be able to deploy those tools? What resources do you have at your disposal to be able to drive your trading venture? Are you going to be able to find financial resource to buy the commodities that you require? Are you able to identify what commodity you want to trade in? Are you able to identify the landscape you want to play in? Do you want to play as a retailer? Do you want to play as a middleman? Do you want to play as a wholesaler? Do you, you understand? So you've got to narrow it down to specific. So I'm very careful to, <clears throat> to give an open blanket recommendation. But I would say, again, look inwards. What can you play to? What strength do you have? What skill set is available to you today? And what resources are available? Because if you're a stay-at-home mom, then you may only be able to trade certain commodities that you can leverage door-to-door -door delivery. But if you are working and you have a nine-to-five day job, then there's also only so much you can do. But if this is full-time, then you can go the long haul. You know, what, how, what resources in terms of finance is available? Will you be able to take a loan or do you have startup capital? Are you going to, uh, you know, so you th there's got to be clarity. I always say that you, you look for... Find, find mentors, find mentors in the industry, find mentors in sales and marketing and trading that can handhold you and guide you through that journey um, so that you're not making a, a decision with a blindfold on. Now, like I said, the opportunities are enormous. You may realize that from the job you currently have, because I don't know anything about you, so I, I will be giving you wrong advice to say, oh, this is the best way. Everyone will chart their own course. So if um, if you could find a mentor, a, a, a coach, a, a business leader of thoughts that you could have a session with, it would be. I know that the bank has some business clinics. You need to think this through. Don't make don't make a decision. So which is the thing mistake we make in Nigeria? The, the head mentality plays out a lot. So everybody sees and hears about my journey today and says, oh, if she can do it, I can do it too. The question is, are you ready to go through the difficulties that I have gone through? Are you able to, uh, will you be able to survive some of the things I've been exposed to? So you must again play to your strength. Know what you're able to give. Know what you're not able to take. Know where to draw the line. And that will inform what aspect. If you're married and your husband will not allow you travel to go and source raw materials for the aspect of trading or business you want to go into, how then do you run a viable business? So you've got to think it through. I always tell people, know where you are, enjoy where you are, and let that guide you on your way to where you're going. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That answer I think it addresses everything, even if we're not clear on exactly what the person is doing or the stage in their life. But I, I believe the points you gave really addresses um, everything that they would have asked and would want to know, especially because I think that you are a very resilient person because of the experience you've gone through. Some of the experiences can break other people. So it's important that we all know our strengths and then play to our different strengths, like you said. Thank you so much for that response. OK, so we have more questions and I will just um, should I read them out? I, I OK, um, yes, yes, even though I see some also read them. Yes, I, so want, to read, I want to learn the two about marriage together and just read them out. So <laughs> I'll read them out here. I that okay? That's fine. <laughs> OK, so that's, that's, I know you've seen them. So I just want to lump them together and read them out. Is that OK? Right. I can go ahead, right? Go so, ahead. Okay, so, so these two people are asking, have you ever been challenged on your position because you are not married? And how did you overcome? And the second one is a bit similar. It says, thank you very much, Ma. Really enlightening. I'm truly encouraged. I'm 35 and single. I fear that no, I fear that if I do too much, 
no man will want to marry me, but I think I should refocus. How do I balance? How do you balance being single and growing a business empire? Thank you for that question. I love that question. And let me first say to that lady, Megan, <laughs> there's no, no, nothing is ever too much. Let me tell you that there is only one man for you, one. And you see that one man will love you just the way you are. And if you, if you, so if you stop putting your best at what you find to do, how, how, what guarantee, what guarantee do you have that the man is not going to walk past you because you haven't done anything? Success has, has turned, success is very attractive. It has a very beautiful and phenomenal outlook. Failure has no friends. Failure, no one associates with failures. No, have you ever seen someone come on social media, on Instagram and say, oh, I am the best friend of the most disgusting, lazy, uncommitted liar on earth. Nobody wants to associate with success. Look at when Mrs. Ngozi Okonjo-Ewela became DG of the WTO. The internet went a god because everyone started digging their pictures from their archives to show that, oh, I had been with her before, I had hung out with her before, I had spent some time with her before, I know her. Everybody became a wannabe friend to Mrs. Okonjo-Ewela. Success is so, it has a sweet fragrance. If you stop yourself from pushing hard and being the best version of you, that Prince Charming might as well work past because what will the fragrance you will be emitting will be repulsive. He does not want a liability in 2021. <clears throat> so Biko, whatever you do, be the best version of you at all times. Age is nothing but a number. Look, I am in my 40s. I, I am single, sassy, successful, going somewhere to happen. I have no plans of stopping now. That Prince Charming, whoever he is, wherever he is in the universe, will meet me being my best, being the best version of me. I have had challenges being single. Oh, yes. I have had a few opportunities taken from me because I am not married. I have had even my internal workforce in the early stage challenge my authority as a woman. You know, I have had policemen say, I have your type at home. And I caution them. I always leave people with this word of caution. Sir, please, point of correction. Note, you don't have my type at home. You have a woman who is docile, who is not aggressive like me. At you have a woman who has chosen not to maximize her gift and her talent or use them. She has chosen the ringbaby.com pathway. I have chosen to push myself and shatter every ceiling and barrier put in my way by men. Look, it is a, by life, not by men. It is a limiting belief that we have allowed, that society has placed on us. That when you are successful, you're unattractive. Let me tell you, when you are successful, you will attract your kind. When you're not successful, you will attract your kind. My question to you is, what is the kind that you want to attract? So having gone to having been exposed to certain things, right? I will become unattractive to a certain cadre of men. You're not educated. Strike, check, off, can't work, right? So the man that I will meet, that I will submit to, and let's be clear, let's be clear. I am a woman who is willing to lean in and submit to the leadership and authority of a man who is able to step up and rise up to the occasion to be the leader of our team. I am not willing to submit to a mediocre. I am not willing to submit to 
a man who does not know, who has no direction. Because when you follow a man who lacks direction, he will lead you to nowhere. So, because I have direction and a sense of purpose, I am waiting for the man who has who has come to the full knowledge of his own, who I want to learn from, who will be my teacher, who will be the head of the home, who will be the husband man, who, like Christ, is willing to love me and see that my effeminate son, even though I'm an alpha female, I am able to submit. I am the sweetest, best girl a man can have. Trust me, even if I say so myself. So guess what? When the men run away from you, they are lost. Because guess what? God is breathing. Let me, let me put it like what we love. Girls love jewelry. Like gold. God is purifying you and purifying your man wherever he is. Taking both of you through, through his purifier's fire. That by the time you come out... And it's time for you to be attracted to each other. Like a fine material, they will pay value for gold. Gold is not sold as a line item on the shelf. Gold is sold by weight. You will be sold by the weight you carry. You will be attracted to the man who will want to keep you forever, cherish to hold and to nurture for the rest of his life because you carry weight, substance. Please. Who is looking for a woman who carries nothing? Everybody can carry a panda. You want to be gold. Stand out in the pack. So that when they put you on the scale to sell you and price you, they will pay premium value for you. Me, I'm not for every man. No. I'm just for one man. And you see, when that guy shows up, you all will know. You all will see. I will glow. And he will be the happier man. And happier person for it. So, sweetheart, stay in that zone. Be the best version of you now and begin to emit and radiate that which you want to attract. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ma, for that response. Like, okay, yes, I, I just want to corroborate what you said. We need as women to stop letting this marriage, what's it called? Should I call it ceiling? Limit us. As a woman, you can achieve anything you want to achieve, single or not single, married or unmarried. You know, there's a picture that I like to tell people about. It has two women on the two sides. And on one side, there's a woman who has a child and a husband, smiling and everything. On the other side, there's a single woman who is an entrepreneur, doing so well. And at the bottom is written a very successful woman on one side. And then on the second side, also a very successful woman. And I strongly believe that. You, you should not be limited by anything. Whatever you want to achieve, go ahead. We need to stop letting, and that's why we are celebrating this and choosing to challenge, because I get so sad, constantly seeing women limiting their lives because, oh, the guy will not like me, I'm not married, they said this, you know. There's so much more you can do. Just go ahead and be your best. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm passionate about what you are saying. Thank you so much for sharing your own story. Okay, so just to wrap this up, I will take a few more questions and just, um, what's it called? Uh, try and tie them together and then we'll look at rounding up shortly. So someone is asking, can I start a business with 2,000 naira today? That is all I have to kickstart. And then another person is asking. So my, answer, my answer is yes. Okay, yes. So someone, someone is also asking, I'm so encouraged by your experience of life. But I just want to ask if it's possible to start a business with no capital in our country. I really want to hear your answer to that. My answer again is a capital Y-E-S, yes. And let me tell you how. You can start by dropping. That person who asks that question may have no capital. But for you to be on this call today, it means you either have a laptop or a mobile phone and you have access to data. So. You can drop ship. You can connect people. You can market people's product. You can freelance. And you have zero capital. Who says you have no capital? Your device is your capital. The, ca the data that you have loaded on your device today to connect to this session is capital. You see, half the time, we limit ourselves. It's limiting belief. It's, it's those things. It's, 
the things that were challenging, the blocks, the mind blocks that we put on ourselves, that society puts on us, that makes us say, oh, we can't do this. I am unable to achieve this because I don't have this. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's not true. It's not entirely true. You can do anything with whatever you are. I always say start where you are. And starting where you are is as simple as just sending a WhatsApp message. Do you know that today with WhatsApp business, you're go you can, okay, let me give you an example. So I have a few ladies who I help with finance. I don't give them money, but I teach them how to fish. They have their mobile phones and they have a WhatsApp platform, their own WhatsApp business on their phone. All they do is they take products from me behind the scenes and they retail on their WhatsApp. So they market. So with WhatsApp business now, you can have your own product catalog of the products you sell. So they take the orders Mondays through Fridays and then they come and take bulk volume from my company and then they go to retail and they make their money. So if you're, for example, selling 500 kilograms of chicken that you're buying from us every week and you're making 100 naira per kilo, let's even say all you're making 100 naira per kilo and you're selling 500 kilos, which is half a ton, that's going to find maybe a lot of work to start with 500 kilos. Let's say all you're selling is 20 kilograms of chickens to 20 of your friends who will buy one one kilogram a week. All right. And you sell one one kilogram of chicken. My ladies at 100 naira, right? You have not invested a dime. The customers will pay you before you supply, deliver the chickens to them. So when they pay you, you come to my store as one of my young women that I'm supporting and you take, you pay for your products for money that has been paid to you, not for money that you sourced anywhere, not from any loan. So 20 kilograms of chicken at 1,500 Naira is 30,000 Naira. Now, if you make 100 Naira per kilo, for example, it means that every Friday you're guaranteed 2,000 Naira. So that lady that's even saying, can I start a business with 2,000 Naira, would have made her 2,000 Naira every Friday from just selling chickens once a week to 20 people. Guess what? In your church, in your neighborhood, on your streets, all the WhatsApp groups you belong to, you will sell 20 kilograms of chicken every week by drop shipping. So if you, have, if you belong to five WhatsApp groups, it means you can sell, set a goal for yourself to sell 20 kilograms of chicken on five WhatsApp groups every week and that is 100 kilograms of chicken at 100 naira, that's 10,000 naira. At the end of every month, what you would have done is you would have earned 40,000 naira side hustle and you would have working capital for whatever it is you want to do. So please think out of the box. It's as simple as selling a wedu. It's as simple as selling water. It's as simple as selling recharge cards. It's as simple as being a, 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 an agent bank uh, merchant bank uh, agent banker there's so many things you can do what what stops us from succeeding and making this money and earning this income that we desire is pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone so you've got to think out of the box you've got to be innovative you've got to be able to ask for help in 2021 if you are ashamed to ask for help you will die in silence nobody everybody is bogged down with their own problems that many people are unable to see yours not because they don't care but because they have their own that you don't see so please ladies reach out to others for help one door may close another will open for every on ten doors you knock one will open and sometimes you don't even need to get help you already have help you just haven't utilized it your mobile phone today is the biggest tool what do you know how to do then do it Lower your expectations in some cases just to get where you're to where you're going. Set realistic goals. Yes, they can be hairy, but be, be committed to taking baby steps and taking that journey one day at a time. Wow, thank you so much, Ma. And you know, there's something you said just now that corroborates what um, Mrs. Mary Akobome said on day two, that we as women, we need to be humble. We need to be humble. I know a number of people were asking her how they start their in debt. She says, you need to be humble. We can't have pride and a chip on our shoulders. 
we must not be feeling too big to ask for help. I feel that that's a salient point, very key. We must humble ourselves and ask for help. And I believe God helping us, when we ask for help, we would get it, no matter how many doors we knock on. And someone is asking, that's why I started like this, how you didn't lose hope when you were in debt of 27 million. You know, how did you keep pushing on without losing hope in that period and phase of your life? When you knew you had this big debt over so you. First, oh. yes, so the first thing again is the place of my faith. So my faith helps me to hang on to God, to say that I'm not here of my own accord. And it's something that we all need to begin to reflect on. How did you get here? You were created by God. You were created by some divine, some divine divine being. We're all placed here. And if I have the understanding that I'm placed here for a reason and for a season, why am I trying to run my life on my own manual? So I got to a point where I realized that my manual failed me. So I started running my life on the manual of the manufacturer of me. So your faith what is your manufacturer's manual? Go back to that manufacturer's manual and remind him of the things that he says to you concerning you. He says that I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. So even when I was in debt, I realized that I needed to stay prosperous. My soul needed to stay prosperous. My mind needed to be astute. So what did I do? I only surrounded myself with friends who had the same vision. I only hung around people who had the same direction. I only looked to associate, so like a sponge, I would only go around people who will help nurture that, that, that belief. You, you know, again, my manual says something. The heart of man will fail him. That's what, what's one, one scripture. It means that at a time is going to come when you will lose, you will, you will be down. He did not say that you would always be up. You would not always be in high spirit. Even to death, he says, oh, death, where is your sting? Life is very spiritual. Why are you trying to live your life a physical being? Look, witches, white witches, black witches, whatever type of witches, life is spiritual. And they live, they feed their spiritual altar. So I've learned to feed mine. One other thing that keeps me going is worship and music. So I always create the atmosphere of worship and music. Don't get me wrong. I cry too. Oh dear, I cry. I let my emotional side come out and I let that emotion not let it keep me in motion. So my emotions is, is not the one that makes me cry. Oh, my life is finished. Oh, it's all over. Mm -mm. I let my emotions propel me into action. So let your emotions propel you into action. At a point, look, I sold my car to get working capital. Some of you, you need to sell your handbags. He's gathering dust in your wardrobe. It's $4,000, kilo day now. And you say you don't have working capital. Sell the human hair. It's 100,000 naira. You will buy another one. What, is, what are your priorities? So my priorities were very clear. I've never held on to anything material like that. Maybe only my land assets in terms of the farmland. Other than that, every other thing is is there's nothing that's indisposable or indispensable really and truly so i've sold my car before to raise working capital i've i've taken paid employment before to help me balance my finances i've taken i've taken i've taken curves i've asked girlfriends friends sisters friends the sisterhood i've asked them for help so i'm very clear about who my girlfriends are my, my most of my friends are older ladies because I want to see how they've been able to balance and juggle being mothers, being sisters, being wives, being daughters, and being successful career women. So who do you surround yourself with? Show me your friend and I'll tell you how far you will go in life. Show me your friends, show me your company, and I'll tell you how far you'll go in life. So those are things you, you, need, to, you, need, to, you need to do. Someone here says, how can I be able to turn my passion to reality? Leave your passion. Leave your passion. Just leave it. That's reality. Leave it. Own it. Every day, you know, when I was much younger, 
I used to watch Joyce Meyer. I used to watch Oprah Winfrey all through every day in university. I used to hold my own imaginary mic when I was done watching those ladies. And I used to speak to an imaginary audience. Over the last 10 years, I have not spoken to imaginary audiences. I've spoken to real audiences at very high level platforms and stages. And I am grateful to God. So I envision my future. Picture your future, write it down, make that vision plain, leave it, put postcard. You know, um, we now have, um, <clears throat> what's that? What, what's that? Um, who, and the word fails me. The, the boards that we all put in, in, in our visual boards. Create your visual board, create your own visual board, and then see yourself in that visual board. Where do you hope to be? What are you passionate about? Who else can attest to the fact that you're passionate about that subject or that matter, that issue? Start to leave your passion. Look, when you, you leave it, it will attract. It's a, like a fragrance. Good news travel fast, as just as bad news. So good omen travel fast. When you're kind, it travels. When you're hostile, it travels. Everything you're doing, you're sending a message. So when you're smiling, it travels. When you're nasty and bitchy, trust me, it also travels. You're sending a message at every point in time. The question is to be conscious about the message you're sending per time. So sometimes even when I get angry, I'm very quick to quickly call myself to order because you just never know who is watching. Strange doors have opened for me in strange ways. And it, it was somebody watching from afar without my knowledge. My first trip to the United States of America was an all expense sponsored US government invitation under the, 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 the flagship program, the International Visitors Leadership Program. This recall was a girl who I told mommy at Walter Carrington one day when I went to help her get her passport, that I will never go back to that embassy. How can we go and be queuing to beg people to go to their country? And I said to my foster mom that I will only go to America if I'm invited to America. If America does not invite me, they should hold their country. Guess what? Words are powerful. Speak into your future on a daily basis. I spoke into my future. That was what happened. My first trip to the U.S. was an all-expense paid trip by the U.S. government with $10,000 shopping money. Come on. So it's, it's, what do you see? What do you see? Do you go on social media and you're torturing yourself by some people's fake lifestyle? Or are you going on that same social media to be inspired by people who, against all odds, have pushed themselves? to do more and be better. What do you see? What you see, how you see, and when you see, speaks to your subconscious. And it begins to influence your decisions. So you've got to be very careful what you see. Sometimes I turn off my DSTV subscription for weeks and months because I need to be, I'm very deliberate about what I take in. I am visual. I am sensual. I, I am a woman. I have feelings. So when you constantly feed your mind negativity, after a while you begin to produce negativity. So I am very conscious and deliberate about what I feed myself, what I see, what I listen to. So music does it for me. My company, isolation sometimes. So I go into isolation. I don't mind being alone. I don't have a problem. I enjoy my own company a good number of times. Because when I come out of that phase of isolation, I come back with my creative thinking ability is actually nurtured. It's, it, it's, I, I, I sharpen my skills. I sharpen my, you know, I'm able to hear clearly, able to build on that passion, able to build you know, just rejuvenate my mind. We create, we, we think my life's purpose. Look at my journals. What have I written down? What am I doing right? Where did I drop the ball? What need, do I need to amend? So it's very important that you pay attention to those things. I hope that answers your question. It answers so well. 
Okay, I have just, I'll just take everything together. Three more questions, please. Someone is asking about your LinkedIn handle. If it's okay, you can share it by saying it or you can reply privately. And then someone is asking okay. if you have a store in Lagos and how someone can get your product so you can decide to just share it to us so that everyone knows. And then the main question here is, what advice would you give to a woman who has constantly pushed and challenged herself to succeed intellectually on the job? Right, but is married to an ego egoistic man who is not as successful or forward thinking, but expects the woman to conform and submit to his directives. So I think this that's all the questions we have for now. So what will you say to these questions? So I'm going to start from yes, we do have a lovely pickup store in Lagos. We are situated at the Northwest gas station in along Bagada Express Road. It's a beautiful store to walk into. Um, we look forward to receiving as many of you there. Um, um, so yes, we have a store in Lagos. My Instagram handle is very easy. I'm pretty Miss Pharma on Instagram. I am pretty Pharma on Twitter. Um, I am Mosumala Umoru on LinkedIn. I'm not very active, but going forward, I will do better. Um, I'm just getting a hand of this digital, increasing my digital footprint. Um, to the woman who is married to an egocentric man, I have never been married, but my best friends have been men. My father is one of my best friends. And I dare say that they all are egocentric and we got to learn to love them. You saw this egocentric man before you married him. Something attracted you to him. At every point in time, play to your strength. What is that thing that keeps both of you united? Manage that. You see, I tell women, you can't be married to a man you don't worship and you don't respect and you don't honor and expect value from him. Some could work. I have never been married, but I tell my girlfriends, worship the king in your man. You know, you know this issue of side chick and main chick and madam. There's something side chicks are doing that madams are sometimes not paying attention to. I am not encouraging it. I'm just saying. So when a side chick worships the king in him, celebrates and honors him, sits at his feet, does not nag him like they all say women do. Can you try to just adjust? You know, I always say before I say, if the other person is at fault, I ask myself, what did I do to trigger that character or that value in that person? I say, I, I deal with myself first before I deal with the other person. So when I'm making a demand of you, it is from a point where I have made greater demand of myself in my commitment to him. Now, there are a few narcissistic human beings and many Nigerians are narcissistic in nature without knowing. And these are things that... I'm, so some people need to go for therapy for many couples married for the wrong reasons, but you can make it work. Now, I am never going to say, oh, because of that, leave your husband. Look, I'm not going to give you my own husband when I marry him. So make your marriage work if you can. However, sometimes women, you also need to take a break from yourself and from your routine. Do you really have me time even in that marriage? enough to think about yourself and not see your man as the problem all the time. We've got to always balance our lives. These guys are also going through stuff. You know, an egocentric man is egocentric because he sees you being the best of you. And sometimes women rub it in the faces of their men. And sometimes some don't. The men are just narcissistic. Look, a narcissistic man cannot give you He's thinking about himself at all times. What is his foundation? So this is why I always tell single girls, look, you're living in the best phase time of your life. The time where your time is entirely yours. Better enjoy and maximize it before that time becomes shared. Because the pasture looks greener on the other side. Only because all your, your time is yours now. Please enjoy it. Travel. 
take courses because when you marry, you now have to share your time like this lady who's asking this question. And I and I, I empathize with her. If you can recommend to your husband to go for counseling, please by all means encourage him. I will recommend a counselor and a coach. She's a soul stripper. She's called the emotions doctor. Her name is Oni Consola Alabi. You can go and look for her on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. She will do a soul stripping session with you and your husband. And what, so I tell people get help. I see a psychiatrist if I have to. I'm not afraid. It doesn't mean that I'm mad. But for my mental well being, I do a good balance of psychi psychiatric medicine. And when I need to take drugs to relax my nerves, I do. When I need to take medication to reduce the pressure, when I need to sleep, and then sometimes, the best medicine is actually food and sleep, food, water, and rest. So I make sure that I get a good balance of all. And you know, rest sometimes is not sleep. Rest is actually taking time off from your routine and doing something crazy, as crazy as getting up by your lonesome self and driving to the beach on Sunday after church. Rest is as good as, as going to take a lovely swim, 10, 20 laps in the morning, three times a week. Rest could even come from beginning to play squash or do tennis. So you do exercise, something that, you know, just do something for you. What do you do as women? Find things that will distract you positively. Find good company. Women who respect their husband, women who commit to the marriage vow, women who take good care of your, their children, women who are successful in their business and make them your mentor and learn from them. And not be ashamed don't suffer and smile sometimes yes you may but not all the time like she has come to ask now i'm i'm i'm, I'm concerned I, I i wish we could have a mentoring session or a coaching session to help some of them where we can bring myself or Nico and one other woman to actually have a session with these women because you can't do it alone speaking up is one step then let's taking you through is another step to guiding you hand holding you to ensuring that we bring out the best in you. I'm sure that you can have conversations with your husband, but if he doesn't listen, don't try to force it. Go back to his own manual. He too has a manual. His manual is God with God Almighty. The one who created his manual, tell him to teach you and lead you how to deal with him. You would always find a way. Whatever you do, to that egocentric husband, never insult him, never disrespect him, especially not in front of your children, because he will come back to haunt you. Respect him regardless. Worship the king in him. Celebrate him. Don't rub your success in his face. Try to be a bit more humble. Work at it and pray. And I'm sure you will get help from God, the divine one, and when you go for all of these mentoring and coaching sessions. I hope that answers her question. Yes, I think it does. I think it does. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you so much. It has been an ex um, amazing question and answer session, very enlightening for me. And I'm sure um, our audience feels the same way. Thank you for how you answered every single question. I believe that those who asked them got answers and even much more than what you said. Thank you for this amazing session. You've, will I say, wonderfully concluded our, what's it called, five-day virtual seminar that we've been having. And I'm sure that every woman that has listened is motivated, is feeling, you know, get up to go push their limitations and challenge every limitation, chosen to challenge everything, every cap, every ceiling that has been placed on them. Thank you so much for this. So thank you everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in these five days of talking to women who have shared different things with us on finances, striking the balance, um, our health, and now breaking limitations. I'm sure you've gotten so much value the same way I have and everyone else that has joined has. I will be introducing our chief marketing officer at Heritage Bank, Mr. Fela Ibidapo, who will be giving us final vote of thanks before we wrap up this session. 
Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. You need, you need to unmute, please. Just done that now. Yes, I can hear you. Good morning, sir. You're welcome. Okay, can you see me as well? Morning, I'm Okay, can I go ahead, I'm Yes, yes, the floor is yours, sir. Okay, fantastic. Um, good morning, ladies. I assume that we have more ladies um, on the platform. Um, I, on behalf of Heritage Bank, I would like to sincerely thank you for uh, your time, your expertise, uh, and just sharing knowledge. You know, a lot of stuff that um, uh, has been shared amongst, you know, all the ladies in particular, even though, you know, I was uh, uh, clearly eavesdropping on a number of conversations just so that I could earn some brownie points with my wife as well. Um, I felt that um, it was very enriching for the last couple of days. And, um, you know, from all the speakers, from uh, our own uh, Mrs. Um, Shadia Lunge, you know, to uh, Mrs. Maria Kobome, to our doctor uh, um, uh, uh, who, came, who came along, uh, Dr. Obechi, uh, to uh, our speakers, uh, Mrs. Dockers or Kobe, you know, also, you know, to uh, Miss uh, Omoru, uh, Omoru. Uh, apologies if I, if I um, pronounce that wrong. Um, it will be a delight again to have everyone uh, on another platform, you know, hopefully uh, I will have, if it was left to me, I will also invite you for uh, the International Men's Day, but I'm not sure if I have you know, the liberty to do, but I sincerely would like to thank you again on behalf of management, you know, uh, and on behalf of all the ladies that you've all re represented here. Uh, I'm sure that everyone has, uh, to a great deal, you know, looked at the theme of, uh, of that challenge. I remember my, my daughter went to school on Monday and she went dressed as a mechanic because um, they were told to come to, to pick uh, those sectors which they felt that ladies, you know, were being marginalized or where men, you know, dominated, you know. So um, she went and she had a fantastic experience, you know, and um, uh, particularly, you know, I have three girls, you know, so um, I think it's only in my house that I must say that I'm uh, the uh, minority, you know, even though, you know, everybody says that uh, the ladies are, but and that being said, you know, um, I really, I would really appreciate uh, all your time that you have taken, you know, to pour out of your experience and to pour out of your knowledge onto, you know, all the ladies who uh, came on the platform. Um, we do hope, you know, that when we do call upon you again in the next, uh, it might be next year, it might be earlier, you know, that you please honor our invitation. So um, on behalf of uh, management, once again, I say thank you and God bless. I also like to thank a lot of people who have worked on the back end that you don't see. Um, I like to thank our capable compare who has been uh, on the ball for the last five days, our dear Amarachi. I also like to thank the team, uh, copy communication team that have worked tirelessly on the back end you know, to ensure that everything uh, has gone uh, smoothly. So uh, on that note, um, thank you, God bless. And we hope that, you know, the, 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 the margin that we see, the gaps that we see uh, in between, you know, men and women will obviously, this will be a, uh, another stepping stone to merge that. Um, ladies across board, I'm sure have been empowered you know, by the comments and by the messages that has come through in the last five days. And I'm sure uh, it will just be uh, a, uh, a start of fantastic things to come. Uh, we support ladies entirely in Heritage Bank. Uh, we'll continue to do that. We'll continue to support anything that has to do with pushing this envelope, you know, in trying to ensure that we have those proper representation, moving it away from 
just mere words uh, to actually having practical steps in ensuring that the ladies are well represented. Um, there's no uh, uh, gain saying to, say, to the fact that they are more than capable, you know, so um, uh, we will continue to push as a, as, a, as a business, we will continue to push, you know, uh, as a bank to ensure that ladies are well represented. Finally, thank you very much and I wish you all a fantastic uh, weekend uh, and the year ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marachi. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that final speech. Um, so we'll wrap it up here. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in for this past um, five days. I have had an amazing time gleaning knowledge from different women across different sectors. And for me, I feel that today's session was just the greatest finale. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Miss Mosumola brought fire. And I feel like I have fire in my bones and I hope you feel the same way too. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll be wrapping up the session now. Ms. Musmola, do you have any final words before we go? Thank you so much for concluding this um, seminar so wonderfully. Do you have any final nuggets for us before we go? I would say I would charge everyone to go on and face the world. You can be everything you want to be. Just search your heart to do it. The world is your oasis. Take it. Woman, be the best version of you. Just do you. Love you. Have an amazing weekend. And thank you, Amara, for hosting us. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this five day seminar. Thank you so much. It's been so much fun hosting, moderating, and just being here, gleaning knowledge. Um, all the videos we've had from day one to day five today are available on our YouTube channel. It's Heritage Bank PLC. All you need to do is just check on YouTube, Heritage Bank PLC, and subscribe to our channel, and then you can access all the videos. Also, you can access all our social media channels at Heritage Bank PLC on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and of course YouTube like I mentioned earlier. So if you were not able to join us today or you just want to go back and you know get hit again with the back bugs that we got today, just go to YouTube and um, listen to the replays all over again. Once again, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It's been an amazing time hosting you, moderating this session and finally happy International Women's Day. Go and shatter those limits. There are no limits to you as a woman. Choose to challenge every limit and cap that has been placed on you. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.